One of the core teachings of organizing from the inside out is how to work with your personality rather than against it. We are talking about this and more today as we continue to be inspired by Julie Morgenstern's work. This is Home with Intention and I'm Jody Pear. Welcome to the Home with Intention podcast. I'm Jody Pear, your host. I support the do-it-yourself homeowners by delivering interior design services with empathy, intention, and simplicity at jodypairdesigns.com and by curating a collection of meaningful home products available at essentialpairings.com. My purpose with this show is to inspire you to create a home that is a reflection of you and what you value most in life. This podcast will support you in breaking through the limiting thoughts and fears that have been holding you back from creating a home that is uniquely you. There are no decorating rules or trends to follow here. Only inspiration, ideas, and encouragement to express your kind of beautiful, a home that captures the essence of your soul. It's time to create your home with intention. Hi, everyone. I'm Jody Pear. Hi, I'm Kathy Feltz. And we're talking again today about Julie Morgenstern's book, Organizing from the Inside Out. And we are moving on to chapter one. And I have to read to you because I just can't say it any better. I have to read exactly what she wrote. (laughs) Um, She says, okay, so chapter one is a new way of looking at organizing. And she says, Being organized has less to do with the way an environment looks than how effectively it functions. If a person can find what they need when they need it, feel unencumbered in achieving his or her goals, and is happy in his or her space, then that person is well organized. I'd like to propose a new definition of organization. Organizing is the process by which we create environments that enable us to live work and relax exactly as we want to. When we are organized, our homes, offices, and schedules reflect and encourage who we are, what we want, and where we are going. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. (laughs) When I read that the first time, I, it took my breath away because that is the language that I use to describe my own book, my own work, my own book, my own work. Um, Mm -hmm. as far as decorating, um, you know, I often talk about, you know, home decor and items that we surround ourselves with. It's Mm -hmm. all symbolism. It is all telling us a story about who we are and it should, like, I try to encourage people to, to Mm -hmm. use these things as symbols to tell you not only who you are, but what is important to you, what you value and what you are still dreaming of. Mm -hmm. And that can be accomplished through your own environment. And I do that with decor. I do that with constantly, I'm looking at my my pictures in front of me. I am constantly doing that for myself Mm -hmm. to remind me of who I am and where I'm going because we forget. And so when I read this from Julie, it's like, oh my gosh, like that is what I say. (laughs) And her book is older. I mean, I, this is not a new book, Um, but this is relatively new for me in the thinking and being able to say that about our spaces. And often, um, of course, I love her book and I love what she says in her book And often what happens for me is people are coming to me for organizing. And the first thing they're saying is how unhappy they feel in their space. They're Mm. unhappy with their space. It's not suiting them and making them feel good. And that's really the motivator for them to change. Yes. they, They just feel so uncomfortable in their own space. And when you think about that, Your home is the place that you need to be able to go and relax. And if you can't go and relax at home, where are you relaxing? When it's not functioning, you, you have no place. That is, I, I love that you shared that because that is a difference between my clients and your clients. My Mm -hmm. clients are, they're not saying they're unhappy with their space. You know, Mm -hmm. like, I don't think 
that they're making that connection, that they're unhappy with their space, or at least they're just not openly talking about it. They want to mm-hmm. improve it, but, yeah. but so often it's because of something they saw, you know, on Instagram or, or, you know, Pinterest or somewhere in a magazine. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I want my space to look like that. So for them to be making that connection and telling you that they're unhappy in their space, I think that that is, mm-hmm that's huge. And not everybody is able to make that awareness. So that's wonderful. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and they don't necessarily know why Mm -hmm. they know it's not functioning. They know they don't like it and they know it doesn't feel good, but they don't know, you know, the why, how come it got like that? Why is it like that? Uh, And they also don't know the, what, what should they do about it? What's the first step or the next step? Mm -hmm. And that is one of the core teachings in Julie's book is that she wants to teach you how to work with the personality as Mm -hmm. opposed to against it whenever, when you're trying to organize these spaces. And I think that's interesting, (laughs) Uh, interesting use of words just because of personality. And when I first read that, I was like, Hmm, I, you know, I think of habit and I think you do too a little bit, but yes. Yes. Yeah. And I was thinking about that because we, you and I had talked about what we were going to talk about today and that we are going to talk about this um, section in the book. And so I was trying to think of some examples from my clients Mm -hmm. and how personality played into or plays into them coming to me and then how we work together. And so I did think of, uh, uh, a young woman and her mom, and we've been working in their house, um, kind of an ongoing project. So working throughout the whole house, room by room, you know, step by step. And one of the things that she said early on, the daughter was that she really wanted us to work together and come together and um, work for a number of hours, then have a break, Mm -hmm. all eat together, and then work again. Wow. Yes. She needed, she needed it to be, um, I don't know if she used the word social, but knowing her and getting to know her better, she needed there to be a social component of what we were doing. And that helped her with her overall anxiety Mm -hmm. about the process. So she was able, even though she couldn't say, oh, this is because of my anxiety and I need it to be social, but that's what, how she asked for it to be set up. And we were able to do that. And then that really helped her to start the process and then stay in it. Mm. So that is yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there are a social aspect to, for organizing. And, and so I'm just thinking of, you know, I guess I've, I've read these things before, you know, tips on, on how to do these things. And, you know, and often they'll say, call in your friend or call in family or something, but even if it is just somebody there hanging out with you, um, just to keep you motivated and, and, and maybe even distracted a little bit, so that you're not associating what you're doing with, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming and I'm never going to get through it. <laughs> right, right, right. And you telling yourself things like, this is horrible. I hate this. You know, that kind of thing. Having somebody there with you helps to distract you. But also I tell my clients organizing can be fun. We can make it fun. Yes. And do you, you know, show and- them how, I mean, and does it, does it, do they f- end up believing that and seeing it for themselves and getting more excited about it as you go. They usually, yeah, they usually do. And they're usually a little surprised by the fact that, yeah, well, this is kind of fun. So there is a social aspect to it for sure. Yeah. My one client with that needing to, she really needed to have a break, sit down, distract herself by being social and then go back to it. Wow. He's the client that was able to say to me, like in a more direct way, you know, I really need this. Yeah. Mm. It was like a reward for her, Mm. maybe without her even realizing that, but she needed to be able to reward herself for doing this work. And that was that social component. Mm -hmm. That is so fascinating. So it's like, find what works for you. I mean, that is what I think that's 
the underlying theme that we are learning here, you know, from Julie's work is that like, don't get caught up at all these how to's and, and trying to compare yourself and, and how you approach these things with what others are doing and what is being advertised and, and promoted, but find what works for you. And, mm -hmm. and that's, and it's all okay. <laughs> right. It's all individual. Yeah. And there's so many different ways to approach it. So it's not painful so that it's more fun yeah. and then you're going to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I just, re you just sparked a memory for me. I remember reading something about how to get yourself motivated and start small. And I think you have mentioned this before, but one example that I did here recently is start with your purse or your wallet or your car. Like it could be really something even not necessarily the house. It could be mm -hmm. even on a smaller scale if you mm -hmm. need to, just to be able to show yourself, so get some instant gratification out of it. Mm -hmm. And then that can help start to build that momentum. Yeah. And then you see how it feels. And then you, you have uh, um, something that happens and you can find what you need right away. And then you're like, oh, now yes. that feels good. Yes. Motivated to keep going. Yes. And trust your instincts, you know, mm -hmm. and knowing what should you approach next? What should you work on next? And what is bothering you and trust what you're feeling inside and then mm -hmm. start, you know, nipping away at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great, Kathy. Thank you very much. It was so good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you too. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks guys. See you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you listen on, because it helps me to grow this podcast and to reach more people. Because the more people who choose their surroundings with intention, the more people can follow their heart back home to themselves, which is the mission for this podcast. Once a month, I will randomly select a reviewer and offer them a free download of my book, The Art of Decorating with Intention, a guidebook to creating an oasis for your soul. For more frequent insights and inspiration, you can follow me on Instagram at Jody Pear Designs. I have been fortunate enough to find the most helpful resources and amazing people whose work has touched me and inspired me to show up here today. The HouseCoachingInstitute.com. Kathy Heller's inspiring podcast, Don't Keep Your Day Job. Allison Barker's work and her new podcast, Your Soulful Brand. The Sherry and Nancy Show, a podcast for women in their 50s that is hilarious and deeply inspiring. And Sandy Monroe. She is a joyful life lived on Instagram and her brilliant teachings and guidance are exactly what I need. I'm so grateful to have found each one of you along the path towards fulfilling my dreams. I'll see you in the next episode of Home With Intention.